Angela Greenick came from a very difficult past, including prostitution, a crime family, drugs, and all that comes with the evils of man. But then she encountered Jesus. Let Angela teach you how to walk in power and authority and to fight for those who may never plan on stepping into a church. Welcome to Training to Reign with Angela Greenick. I'm Angela Greenick from Set Free Ministries International. Today, do I have a word for you. We're going to be teaching about demons and angels and their origins. Um, recently, I just um, completed about nine months ago a DVD called Armed and Dangerous and was able through the Word of God to teach you the strongholds of the enemy, how he operates, how he plays, but also how we win. You know, I just want to encourage you today that if you're going through hard times, you know, keep persevering, keep pressing in because God's word is truth and you will get set free. Okay, now we're going to talk about angels. Do you know that God has an angelic justice leg? We have angels. We have the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels and of course, uh, guardian angels. So I wanna start out today and start out with angels. And the word derives from the Latin or from the Greek, and it means it's a heavenly being. It is a messenger from God. Angels do the work and the bidding of God. Have you ever wondered sometimes when you were younger that you should have been killed maybe 10,000 times or were in a car accident, but something guarded you and protected you? They were angels from God. You know, when we pray to receive Christ as Lord, we literally are assigned a guardian angel. I love that, that we have angels that are with us. And so it's really a key because we talked about the demons as foot soldiers, but the angels are God's foot soldiers. And when we start to release them, they go and do the work that we need to have done. I love what the word declares out of Zechariah 12:8. He says, for on that day, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem. He says, like an angel of the Lord that goes before him. You know, God, all throughout the Old Testament, the word all the time came up, an angel of the Lord. God wants us to know that anytime when we cry out and need help, that there are angels there that come and help us. I know I've had times in other nations where I literally, when I went to Pakistan the first time, I did not know if I would make it out of there alive, honestly. They had burnt the American flag across, you know, across the way, and there were so many curses, so many things coming. And my husband called me right before I got on a plane, and he said, God said that I need to pray and release angels to get you home. And I said, if you only knew how desperate I need to get out of here. And so we started to pray, and there was literally in the room, there was, there was literally, I don't know how many angels were in the room, but I got out of the hotel, I got on the plane, and I got back into America. And I want to encourage you with this. When we send a hedge of protection and send the angels out to guard and protect our children, they do. When we pray for a hedge of protection, it happens. You know, I love that there are times where darkness will step in, and I want to take you and give you this picture because it's really key to where we're going into. When you are dealing with with demons that are coming in, let's say into your son and daughter's rooms at night, and they're trying to draw them, trying to get into their dreams. Even the word decrees in Proverbs 3 that you can pray for sweet rest for your children. I would encourage you to get on your knees and start praying to release the angels into the room, that God would send the messengers of light and life and love to start to come and battle against the darkness. It's almost as if you were to open up in the spiritual realm, which we do, you would see darkness and you would see light. You would see demons and angels with swords and weapons and they are waiting to take each other out. The demons are being released on a nonstop basis because we are dealing with rulers and spirits of wickedness. We are dealing with such dark hordes of hell. But when we as Christians start to release the angels to guard and protect and to release, I'm going to tell you what, it'll literally, literally, it will stamp out. It'll put out the hordes of fire from hell and it'll release light into their rooms. That is how important it is. I want to say this um, personally, I have never seen an angel this big in my life. The angels that I deal with are huge. I was just in Redding, California um, 
Furious Love is a movie that's coming out on also spiritual warfare. And Darren Wilson um, made this movie. And when he stood, he looked at me and he said, what do you see? I said, Darren, your angel is so big that all I see here is his kneecap. And that was near the ceiling. And he said to me, Angela, do you know what his name is? And I said, all I know is I see the letter F over his sash. But can I tell you that when his angel started to move, it sound like many waters. I could not tell you ever probably, I can't pronounce the name because it literally sound like, like thundering waters. And he was releasing the wind and the fire and was preparing, you know, the place of where the movie was being released at to bring, you know, the protection. It was like, it was like Darren's angel was standing right there and said, you want to make my day? Come on, because he was not going to be moved. See, that's where we're at. God wants us to have the authority to understand and recognize who we are, where we are. And when we start to release the angels, they come. And it was really awesome because one of the guys that is in the movie, I gave him a word from the father and gave him the name of his angel. And he said, Angela, can I tell you, have you ever seen me before? And I said, no, I don't know who you are. He said, can I tell you that these are the exact same things that I do in the spirit? I go, well, that's because your angel does them. And he started laughing <laughs> because I said, well, I'm just watching your angel. And he just said, oh, okay. And so... Um, let's take a minute and we're going to pray and we're just going to move right on. Holy Spirit, right now we pray that you would invade us with legions of angels, that you would start to open up the eyes. God, you decreed that this was the year that we were to come out of exile and to fulfill destiny and to see the dreams come into place. Father, you have so many prophets that have been released, but Father, the true seers need to arise right now and to start to release and see what you see. Because when that happens, the knower will step in, God says, and it'll release us into our finest hour. So Holy Spirit, have your way right now and send legions and legions of angels. In your name, Jesus, amen. Okay, now in this next segment, because we just shared a little bit about angels, but I also want to talk to you about what angels do, okay? And so the first thing is, out of Revelation 8, 3, and 4, it talks that they present the prayers before the throne of God. I want to say this to the saints of God right now, that our prayers are like a smoke. They are like an incense that reach the throne room of God. Many years ago, I didn't know if God was hearing my prayers. I talked about how I had gone through the divorce, and I really cried out to God, and I had a vision, and I saw shafts of light going into heaven. And in these colors of light, I said, Lord, what is the sound? What are these lights? And all of a sudden, like for a second in time, it stopped, because God can do that, amen. He stopped, and I heard all these different dialects and prayers. I heard so many people crying for their families. Anything you could think of that they were praying for, they were. And God says, daughter, I want you to know that I hear every prayer. Every prayer comes to my ears. I was like, Lord, even when, I'm in, even when I rebelled, you still heard my prayer. And the Lord said, yes, I heard your prayer because Revelation 8, 5 decrees that God hears the prayers. And it's like this, the finger, the bowl of incense gets poured back out and he hears your prayers. And I want to encourage you to remember that the angel had presented it before God. They also serve as warnings. That's why many of us are alive today. One of my favorite stories is how God had warned Joseph in a dream, Matthew 2, 13, and that the angel had appeared to him and said to get up and take the child and go because Herod was out to kill. So they are there not only to come in our dreams, but they also protect us from harm. 
Um, Daniel 6.22 says that God had sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lion. There are many times that we have gone into places where, you know, we literally pray. Um, a month ago, I was picking up a friend of mine from Africa, and I felt such hordes of darkness literally driving up as we were pulling maybe a few miles into the airport. And as soon as I put up my hand, I literally started going into prayer because it was really satanic. I'm telling you, I know without a shadow of a doubt that this man was sent in from Satan. This, As soon as I started to go into prayer, I saw white light come out of my hands. And two seconds later, he sideswiped the car where I was sitting at and the rear view mirror fell off. There is no way that I should not have been crushed and killed because we were doing probably 60, 65 miles. And he hit the car so hard. But I'm gonna tell you what, my angel Frank literally guarded me and I did not get hurt. And the only thing that happened was that the mirror broke down and had fallen off and we just duct taped it and went back on our way. And the Lord said, daughter, the enemy has an assignment to take you out right now. But just like Daniel, I will shut the mouth of the lion. And I really prayed through the night watches for that guy because I know he was sent in to take me out. And there are many times you'll say, wow, how did I ever make it out of that? And we have to remember that God allows his angels to come in war for us and to literally shut the mouth of the lion. A lion devours, you know, words devour, but God had a plan. Also, um, you know, he says that we're at a war like we're in our finest hour because we are. You know why I'm so happy that it's 2010? Um, because in 2009, honestly, on 999, Patricia King released Armed and Dangerous. She released a realm that people that really are in warfare can step into their destiny. And I thought, Lord, we heard about 777 and 888, but we really didn't hear about 999. And the Lord said, no, because it really is about birthing the church into our destiny. And it is about warfare being released. But it also has to do when we release our angels into their destiny that we, you know, like I just, you know, we're just reading out of the scriptures that they come to us in dreams. They warn us, you know, but they also unleash wrath against the enemy. And that's what I see is happening, that there is an unleashing, hallelujah, that the angels are unleashing because God's people are learning how to pray and how to war and how to fight back. And so I love it. Joshua 5 says, and when they got near to Jericho, he looked up and there was a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, he says, are you for us or are you for our enemies? And he said, neither, he replied, because he was a commander of the army of the Lord that has come. And it says right that in there, Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence because he knew that God had sent him a messenger to help him in our darkest times, in our hardest times. You know, I love the story about Jericho. I love um, what it represented because we are in a battle right now like Jericho. And when, if we will be obedient and listen to the voice of God, he'll move. He also says in Matthew 18, 10, that the angels behold the face of God. Whew. As I'm saying, the Holy Spirit's dropping all over me. It's like, shoo. He says, I tell you that the angels in heaven, they always see the face of my Father in heaven. That's what Jesus says, Matthew 18, 10. Isn't that beautiful? They're also worshiping warriors, Revelation 5, 11, and 12. He said, I looked and I heard the voice of many angels numering thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon tens, tens of thousands, and they were circled around the throne of God. And in a loud voice, they said, worthy is the lamb. And all praise and honor and glory came because it's okay to be worshiping warriors for Jesus Christ talks about out of Acts 8.26, he says, and they guard and protect us from greater harm. And it talked about where Philip was to go one way, but the angels told him to go another. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I know this is a word for someone out there right now, but Psalm 127, one decrees, you know, unless God builds your house, you labor in vain. And sometimes we want to go do things, but there are going to be times where God's going to go, don't go left, go right. And sometimes God's going to have to literally send an angel to awaken us so that we do not get off course. It's so critical right now in the climax, you know, the climax that we're in, 
and the climate that we're in, if we're a degree off, it could literally take us, you know, maybe a year down the road off, and we really don't have time for that right now. We must believe what the Word of God says, you know, and they strengthen us, Luke 22, 43. He says, and an angel appeared, and he strengthened them. I guarantee you many times we didn't know it was an angel, but we were strengthened because God will send a brother and sister your way that'll so encourage you, and you'll go, oh my gosh, I cannot believe. It was like an angel himself came and just blessed me. And God says, what makes you think it wasn't me? I've had three experiences on the streets of Seattle. We literally had angels that appeared that were there with other witnesses. One second they were there, and in under a blink of an eye, they were totally gone. They were in my hardest hour when I was on the streets of Seattle battling for truth and justice, battling for the homeless, battling the right. You know, some of you may think this is crazy, but I do not believe that we're going to lose. I do not believe that we are going to win the loss. Like if I'm at a gay rights parade, that I'm going to say, you know, turn or burn. I, I just don't believe that. I believe that the love of God and the truth of God is what's going to parallel and set people into their destinies. I have a young friend um, I love with all my heart that was raised a Christian, really got into a lot of d demonic, satanic, um, not just with the vampires, but, you know, um, homosexuality, everything. And, you know, even in his darkest times, whenever he saw me um, in some of these places, he would say, well, you know what, that, see her right there? That's my pastor. And you would look at this person, and I have many that are like this, and you would say, oh, my God, they're just, they're clothed in nothing but darkness. But I saw the light, and because of that, because I saw value in them, and I prayed that God would send angels to strengthen and guard these young warriors for Jesus, they're coming out of darkness now and into the light. Okay, now I want to talk to you about this next level, which are the archangels. They are high-ranking angels. They are war. They are messengers. They are liaisons between God and humans. Um, there are so many stories throughout the Bible that talk about angels, but the one that many of you know um, about the archangel has to do with Michael. He is the warrior, the hero of the faith. So many times when we are battling for nations, we pray literally for Michael, the warrior angel, the archangel to come in and to battle. There have been times where I have literally gone into the throne rooms, not just of heaven, and have gone through areas of heaven. But beloved, this is such a key. But angels, it's almost like a monastery up in heaven. It looks like a monastery. But Michael has his own domain up there. And the angels are up there waiting to be released. And he has the door open at all times. And there are times where we are, we are at war and we have got to pray for that upper ranking angels to come and to battle and to war. And that's what happened in Daniel 10, where um, it talked about because Daniel was so highly favored and he prayed and he warred and he humbled himself before God, but he knew that he had to have a breakthrough. And what ended up happening is Michael battled through from earth into the second heaven, into heaven, and he battled through and he brought forth the word. Now, I want to just say this. I believe that if we would start to pray and start to intercede and start laying down areas and saying, well, it doesn't matter if you're Baptist, you're Catholic, you're Presbyterian, whatever it is, but if we would start coming together and saying, look, it's all for one and one for all, and we would start to put down our own mandates and start to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, lift up the cross and say, look, we are in a battle for truth and justice. Injustice is like this right now, and we have got to bring the scales back. God decrees in Jeremiah 23 that he hates injustice and that we are his workers, but he is 
also given us workers, which are his angels. And Michael is key. Gabriel is also a key because he is a sound. He releases a sound different than Michael, but do not think that he is not important. You know, sometimes people go, well, you know, there's Michael, but there's Michael, but then, yeah, there's Gabriel. No, 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 no. He brought a sound to Mary. You know, God is needing right now for Gabriel once again to release a sound into the airwaves. And in that sound, God says it'll be like a suddenly, just like when we go back into the story in the book of Acts um, 8, and it talks about where Saul was on the road to Damascus, and there was a light. The, they saw the light, but only Saul, God said, heard a sound. We've got to be able to hear and release a sound right now. And I want to pray that, you know, you may think, well, my gosh, I can't release Michael. And I've seen Michael at times where he literally has stars that they propel around his head. And as soon as we start to war and we get in a major intercession, I watch as the stars literally shoot out and they bomb, the star like bombs and explodes and it literally takes out darkness. He has at different times, you know, he has weapons and, and axes and swords and flames and um, just all these different pieces that are to him, different clothes. I think sometimes maybe people just think, well, there's an angel and sometimes they release, you know, white feathers. I showed you earlier my box where I have different colors from different types of angels that have um, left different feathers behind, you know, and I know this may sound, I don't know what it'll sound to you, but, you know, sometimes I hit such a war level when I'm praying for my major superhero friends. I'm all about the Justice League, just like God's about justice, but God's about the Justice League, and we have extreme gifts and, and mandates and talents, and we're superhero friends till the end. But there are times where people will think, you know, that people are praying for us and they're not. And that's why it's so critical. I believe that God will leave me a feather like I talked to you earlier and shared my one feather because my one superhero friend was in trouble. And God woke me up to pray. And I said, Lord, I just went to bed. And the Lord says, you will get up right now and pray because your friend is in trouble. And within a blink of an eye, that's when we sent out the angel and he cut through. And I really released and said, God, I need warrior angels now to guard my friend, to get him to be able to do the work that he's doing because he is literally leading out hordes and hordes of darkness, he's taken them out by the word, by the sword of God, by the ministries that he works with. And he is literally taking them out. And if you could hear what I hear behind me right now, you would hear the train. And every time I hear that train, God reminds me that I am on track. And God wants us to know that that train is moving and that we are on track and that we can start to release angels to guard and protect our loved ones, that we can start warring for nations. We can war for America. We can war, war for Afghanistan. And we can war and see, you know, I love what the word decrees in John the Baptist. He goes, and the violent take it by force. Sometimes you have to stir up your most holy faith and violently war. I wanted to bring a word to you that would dispel the works of darkness and that would enlighten the works of light, which are the angels. Um, demons and angels and their origins. I wanted to give you bits and pieces so that you would understand through the Holy Word of God that you can release angels. Psalm 103.20 says you can release them to pray and war on your behalf. Many times I've sent them out, even through this um, time that we've been here broadcasting and, and doing this DVD, we have stopped a few times and prayed and released angels to go and, and to help people get set free. I'm telling you, we hit segments today. I know that God literally a fire shot into you. You know that you have to take that sword of God, which is the word of the living God, and you have to draw that line in the sand, and you have to make some changes in your household. You may say, well, I don't know if I can handle it. Well, earlier in the segments, we've talked about when you're weak, you can be strong because God will send you strength through his word, through friends. My prayer is that you would be so encouraged right now. So I'm just gonna take um, just a few minutes here and I just wanna pray 
because we can't say anymore that we're dying for lack of knowledge because God's brought forth his word. And my prayer is that you would rise up, mighty warrior, that you would arise and shine those Elijahs and Elijahs and Deborahs and Joan of Arcs and Harriet Tubman's and Smith Wiggleworths and you and me, that we would arise up and that we would be armed and dangerous for the battle that's ahead because God will give you strategies. He will teach you how to fly in and how to take back the land where the enemy said you would be barren. God says you won't be. He said you will have life abundant. And so King Jesus, right now, we thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to discern between darkness and light and that we are able to start releasing that angelic um, justice league against the hordes of darkness. And I thank you, God, that when it's all said and done, your word decrees, there isn't even a name for this angel, but that, a, but that an angel will bind the angel of darkness and that he will be thrown into the pit forever and that your kingdom will come and heaven and earth will become one and your light will shine and that I believe we're going to even have greater adventures ahead. So we just want to thank you right now, Father, that you will continue to train and teach us and that we would pray and release angels. And like my friend said, I don't even know if I can send that angel back, but it confirmed the word through a feather and through the timeline that it happened and that our words set and create boundaries. And God, let us see your kingdom come. Let your glory glory, Lord. Let the heavens, Father, let the gates be ripped open and ripped off and that your glory will continue to pour, pour, pour revelation and light um, into all of our lives. And I know, God, that we will never be the same again. I pray a blessing over every household that hears this message that they will be encouraged and enlightened because that's what happens when light pierces the darkness. That light illuminates the darkness and we are set free in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hi, I'm Marty Stotler with Angela Greenig Ministries, and today I'm asking you to be a blessing to Angela Greenig Ministries and to the world around us. If you would just consider partnering with Angela, even if you have five dollars a month to spare, that five dollars will move mountains, and that I can promise you. Angela blesses people all over the world, and finance is what allows her to do so, allows her to go and minister the kingdom here on earth. So please go to AngelaGreenig.com, go to the Covenant Salt Partner tab, and please consider partnering with her today. Thank you. Angela Greenig wants to thank her friends and partners. Your prayers and financial support help Angela preach the gospel, build schools and churches, and reach the destitute. For more information on Angela and the valuable resources available, visit AngelaGreenig.com.